This is Real Oregon Lifestyle with Andrea Fay and Jen Fiddler, two licensed real estate brokers who share their love of all things Oregon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Oregon Lifestyle. I'm Andrea Fay. I'm Jen Fiddler. And today we've got a fun episode all about remodeling. And I should let you know up front that we do have visuals today. So make sure to catch the, the actual video on Facebook or YouTube. And we'll also post the photos on our website as well. So um, if you're listening to the audio, make sure you check those out. Um, but first, you know, we get asked a, a lot of questions about remodeling. Um, what projects should I do? What's going to be the most bang for the buck? Um, and so we thought we'd take some examples that Jen has, you've got some great ones, um, and see, you know, what are those good projects to do and what is going to help that bottom line in the end? Yeah, you're right. I get asked that all the time. In fact, I just talked to a client of mine the other day and they'd had a solar panel guy <laughs> over to their house and, you know, they were kind of thinking about doing it and they're like, well, what do you think if we're selling in a couple of years? And I said, unfortunately, in my experience, people don't seem to value um, solar panels as much. And we talked about what the cost was going to be. And I said, put that money into your kitchen, get some quartz countertops. Um, you know, they've already redone the floors and some things like that. But I think that would actually go further. I mean, you know, as much as I would love to say, you know, sustainability, save the environment, lower energy costs, all of that good stuff. Um, people just don't care about that. And, you know, it, for less amount of money than they were looking at spending on the solar, um, they could really have a huge impact on their kitchen. That's so true. And we do, you know, I actually sold a house this year that had solar panels on it. And that was one of the questions was, well, how much, you know, how much does solar actually make a difference in the price? And the answer is not really, it doesn't really do very much as far as the price goes. Um, and yes, they're cool. And yes, we're all for saving the environment. But when it comes to actually, you know, the the numbers of people that care about solar panels is is less than yeah. what you would think. So yeah. um, that's awesome. So um, I know you have some great examples of some projects you've worked on. Yeah. So I I'm cheap. Like if you've listened to us talk a lot, you know that I don't tend to spend a lot of money on some of the stuff that we do. And so I thought I would show some examples of the last few houses that we've owned and what we've done to them that, you know, didn't really cost that much money and how big of an impact it had and how that affected our sales price and all of that good stuff. So Andy has some good photos he's going to bring up for us. Sweet. Uh, so this is my current house. Um, it actually, the bathroom wasn't a ton different and I didn't really have a good before picture, but the countertops were already done. However, the fixtures, oh, I think in this picture, the fixtures are still brass on the sinks, but I've, I've since switched those out. Um, the fixtures were brass, the knobs were brass, the overhead light was brass, and it had this gross um, shower door from the original shower door from the 90s that was brass as well. So um, one day when Grayson was gone, I got a wild hair and I ripped the shower door off myself and he came home and he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have since now put tile in there, um, which we did end up hiring out even though Grayson could do it. But here's what I did with this bathroom. We painted the cabinets so that they were just a little bit fresher white which cost a gallon of paint. I mean, it really wasn't that expensive. And you did the work yourself, right? Yeah, that that we did ourselves. Um, the fixtures, the little knobs and stuff, I got those in the contractor Home Depot packs. They were like, I don't know, four knobs in a pack for like $9 or something like that. So that was pretty inexpensive. And then I had this idea of putting up shiplap and Grayson wasn't really sure about that one, but that needed something on that wall because it was just drywall before. So we put the shiplap up and painted it. And uh, we did both of our bathrooms with the ship wall um, back. And I think it was about $250 for materials. That light fixture probably was like, I, I would be surprised if I spent $100 on it. So just to give you 
Oh, and the fixtures. So the fixtures, uh, we probably spent later, like the plumbing fixtures, maybe 250 bucks on those. So for $600, $700, um, you can have a seriously big impact on how your bathroom looks. I mean, that just getting rid of the brass for one thing was huge. And then um, again, like I said, we've since tiled the shower and stuff, which cost about $1,300 to tile the shower. So people think master bath remodel, and I get it. It's it sounds very overwhelming, but you can work with what you have. You know, I just used my old cabinets. The countertops have already been installed, but even so, you can get vanities really inexpensive. Um, a friend of mine is remodeling her bathroom. She spent uh, six fifty, I think, on her vanities. So it really doesn't have to be an expensive project. And as long as you don't relocate plumbing and you're not doing wiring and stuff like that, you can make a really big impact. So I would say all in, this was probably $700 to remodel this bathroom. I, yeah, I think it looks beautiful. And you know what I love is the shiplap, the shiplap adds a little bit of texture to it and yeah. to, to what, you know, wouldn't have been there before. So, and then, you know, some, fun little elements. I like, I like the fact that you have your, your little flower plants, your little lilies. Um, and then you've got your nice little tray of goodies there. I love that look just because it keeps it organized and it just adds a little bit of style and, um, you know, a little bit of glam. Yeah. Decorating, I swear, white towels and a couple cute little decorative accessories also really go a long way. Also, I realized that not everybody lives like this. I tend to live in my house like I'm getting ready to sell it at any moment. So I know not everybody's bathroom is this organized. It doesn't have to be this organized, but mine generally looks like that most of the time. Uh, actually, ours does too, um, because I'm the same way. Um, we have other areas of the house that are less tidy, but I'm also dealing with other people in the house too. So I can't control the whole thing, but you know what? I, I love this bathroom. Um, it just, it has a nice look. It's got a spa quality to it. And I think that that's the look that a lot of people are, are going for. People want to be able to retreat in their master bathroom and, I think there's a, an element of luxury that needs to be there. And I think that you've got all of those elements. Thanks. All right, Andy, next one. Uh, so this was the kitchen in our last house when we bought it, the before. Um, it was built in the mid 2000s and they were doing that black granite that was in everything. Um, you'll see in the next picture, I ended up actually keeping that, but the cabinets just made it look dated so 2005. Um, the faucet was just kind of cheap. Everything was like sort of builder grade. Um, so I went ahead and go ahead, Andy, and go to the next photo. Um, we had the kit, we had the house painted and we did kind of a light gray, but I did a little bit darker gray on the cabinets, changed out all the knobs, same thing, did the um, contractor box packs from from Home Depot. And then we put white quartz on the back portion of the kitchen to kind of brighten up the kitchen. And I ended up leaving that black granite. And then we just did a backsplash. Um, the painter did these for us. Uh, my painter, he painted the entire interior of the house, including the cabinets for like $2,800. So I don't know exactly what- That's a great deal. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the kitchen would have cost by itself, but I can tell you the quartz was uh, $4,500, the quartz and the backsplash. So we didn't change appliances out. We didn't do anything like that. Um, the knobs probably cost a couple hundred bucks. So we, excluding paint and figuring out what that specifically cost, um, that was about a $4,500 remodel on that kitchen. And of course, just made it look like a totally modern, different place. Now, and so in the grand scheme of things, $4,500 though, you know, maybe to some people sounds like a lot, but it, it really isn't in the grand scheme of things. And resale wise, um, you ended up selling that house um, and, and probably making some good money off of that house too. Yeah, we bought that house in 
2015 or 16. I don't remember exactly. Uh, I guess it was 2015. We sold it in 2018, so three years later, and we made about an $80,000 profit. And really, we focused a majority of our um, efforts on the kitchen. We did replace the um, countertops with granite in both of the bathrooms, and that was pretty inexpensive as well. I want to say we were in that about 1500 bucks. So um, I'd say, you know, for the three things that had the biggest impact, we did some exterior paint and stuff like that. But the three things that had the biggest impact were the two bathrooms and the kitchen, I would say, were in it like $6,500, maybe $7,000. And again, we made about 80000 in profit in about two and a half years. You know, and I think that that, that speaks a lot to to choosing the right colors, choosing colors that are going to be a little bit more timeless, um, but also still on trend. And I think all of the elements in this picture show that, um, you know, you are still able to keep the granite in the middle. Um, but that quartz on the back, I think just kind of makes everything pop a little bit. So it, you did a great job on this. And actually, I cooked in this kitchen, I, I believe at one time. You and that did. was a lot of fun. It was a great kitchen to, to cook in. I think you know, kitchens and bathrooms are the ones that are going to get you the most bang for the buck. Yeah. And I think when people just as a buyer's agent, when I walk through a house with someone, if they see that the bathrooms and the kitchens are not updated, then in their mind, they think it's going to cost $50,000 to upgrade it. When in fact, it, it probably doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, it really it really doesn't cost as much as people think. Um, I obviously do get some contractor discounts with Grayson, but I always extend that to my clients, my friends, and stuff if they ever need to buy anything from um, you know one of the distributors or whatever. We can usually get a discount for them, so that helps tremendously. I think shop around is one of the biggest things. Um, if you can kind of general the project yourself, that'll save some money. I mean, this was pretty easy to manage. We had our, we had, you know, the cabinets painted, we had our countertop guys. Um, you know, it really wasn't that hard for us to manage something like that. So if you're willing to kind of work with the contractor, the subcontractors directly yourself, you'll save some money there as well. That's awesome. You know what? Um, another Another question that comes up a lot is, you know, what are the paint colors that I should be focusing on? when I'm either remodeling or, or whatever it may be. And, you know, gr all the gray tones have been very, very popular these days. And I, I like the grays. In fact, my house, you can see in the background, we have painted a very light gray. Um, you know, I, I still feel like a lot of those are on trend, but I think we're getting away from some, like a lot of the heavy, heavy grays. What do you think? Yeah, um, according to like the blogs and, you know, designers and stuff I follow, they are getting away from everything being gray. Um, white, you can't go wrong with classic white right now. That used to be kind of boring, but I honestly, I was kind of struggling about this house of what, what to paint colors. And I finally was like, just paint it all white. I don't care. You know, we did paint the downstairs a little bit of a light gray color, but the upstairs is all white, and I kind of love the simplicity of it. You can always add an accent wall later, although those aren't supposed to be on trend anymore either. But, you know, you can do stuff with furniture and decor to brighten spaces up, and white just makes things look bigger. Um, I know one color that is a little bit warmer color that's really popular is um it's a uh, grayish, I think it is. From, yes. Yeah. So it's a little bit browner. So it, it warms the room up a little bit. It's not quite as cool. Um, I think also, too, if you're going to live in your house for a while, just paint whatever color you like and, you know, worry about it later. Figure out what's on trend when you're looking to resell it. And if you have a bright pink wall that you have to repaint white when you go to sell your house, okay. But if you want that pink wall, go for it. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you have to enjoy the house while you're living in it. So Exactly. Um, I mean, most people aren't like us in constantly thinking that we could be selling tomorrow. So <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you, you just never know. I, I, you know, I don't mind some of the the lighter grays. I, I do okay with those. I like them, but I, I'm 
really enjoying starting to see like some of the colors warm up again. But I also feel like, you know, with some of those neutral colors, whether it be, whether you're painting your walls white or light gray or grayish, you have the opportunity to use accent pillows and furniture to like actually bring in some color. And I think that's a better use of color because it's really cheap to replace pillows and easier to replace pillows than it is to repaint your walls. Absolutely. That's always kind of my mindset. And uh, this closet behind me in my office is full of decorative pillows of, you know, I, I get sick of them and I change them out every few months and then I bring some back in and Grayson's like, how many pillows do you need to own? I'm like, all of them, because I don't know when I'm, my mood's going to change and I might want a different color. So, you know, uh, I have some at the office in our storage closet. I have a whole bunch of decorator pillows also because, well, occasionally I come across a client that um, was kind of stuck in the 2000s with all the browns and like their couch is brown, their walls are beige, like everything's brown. And so we need to kind of liven it up a little bit. And then in, in photos, like everything is just kind of like blah. And then throw some pillows in there. And then all of a sudden they, there's something to look at. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. Yep. What are our next ones that we get to look at? This is a house that Grayson and I actually flipped for a client. And I wish I would have had some interior photos, but um, this one, we were getting ready to get it on the market and it needed some work. And I just didn't love the paint color. It just screamed late nineties to me. And so we worked with them to, um, paint the house. It's kind of a dark charcoal gray and the white accents made it pop a little bit more. We actually sold this one prior to it going on the market for over asking price to one of the neighbors who was kind of watching what was going on. Um, I just think that house went from like drab 90s kind of blah to just really, really pretty. Um, we also had them paint the door, the front door black. So, you know, something to kind of even pop a little bit more, which you can't see with that tree. But um, to me, that was one of those things that just had such a huge impact. And originally we were looking at selling all these houses. Um, this is a client of mine who had a few investment properties that they were going to 1031 into other properties in different states. And I was giving them my opinion of price. And I'm like, but if we do all these things, I think we can get this much more. And originally, I think I was telling them around 400 for this house. Um, we had them paint the exterior, um, paint the interior, not the full interior, just some of it, um, paint the cabinets, a few other things um, that needed to be done, just kind of repair type stuff. They, uh, they did have to do the roof on this one too. There was some stuff that needed to be done, but it ended up netting them, a, I, I wanna say it was 50 to $75,000 more than we were originally looking at. So that $25,000 investment that they spent because they did do a roof and fencing and stuff, they spent a little bit more money, um, ended up getting them, uh, you know, probably, yeah, 50 to $75,000 more. And if we actually would have went on the market, I think we would have probably got multiple offers on this one, but it was oh, no of, doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it was kind of a cool story The the neighbor bought it. And, um, you know, it was just it was an easy transaction. He offered over asking price to keep it off the market and it, and it worked. But I think the things that we did had a pretty huge impact. I think so. I mean, it definitely went from late 90s to to the modern era. <laughs> and, you know, I, it's amazing. Also, I think curb appeal is such an important thing that a lot of times people forget about. And I believe, you know, the color of the roof has a lot to do with that as well. Uh, me personally, I can't stand like, I'm not really a big fan of brown roofs. I, I like that charcoal color these days. That's the most popular. I think it's the most versatile. Um, I don't like white roofs. Those are the worst to me. Um, that's like the best way to, to date it. <laughs> but um, that charcoal just, it looks so much better. And the paint colors, I mean, you just have the whole package of curb appeal now. Yeah, yeah. Curb appeal is a big deal. And one thing that is kind of often overlooked, um, 
your first impression of a house is is the front of it. And, you know, we've talked about it in other podcasts, but the front door and how much of an impact that has being clean. Um, you know, if you have a dented front door, uh, just little things like that, that just make such a huge impact on what people see when they first walk up to the house. And so I thought this was a great example of, you know, not that much money having a huge impact. Oh, big time. And it's funny, those, um, you know, it's little like wear and tear items, like, you know, a little bit of scuff of paint on the front door or something like that, that turns into a, it, a perception in the buyer's mind that the house hasn't been cared for. When it's really, it's just, you know, we all live and, you know, sometimes we live and, and sometimes there's little scuffs of paint. <laughs> Yeah, I actually have a painter coming over to my house this week for that very reason. Um, you know, had my niece over for Christmas and we did some hoverboarding and now my baseboards need to be rep repainted. So, you know, you live in your house and living in your house versus putting your house on the market are two totally different things. But I think just look at all those things when you're getting ready to put your house on the market because they do have a huge impact. Absolutely. They definitely do. Yeah. Sweet. Well, what's the next one that we get to look at? Oh, this is my current house. Um, still got tools in that one, but I thought that was, I didn't know what exactly to do with that fireplace around, but I just knew it was very 90s. I didn't like it. So we actually spray painted the gold black. Um, you can buy Rust-Oleum, spray paint that. We took... Um, what did we do with that one? Uh, slate, I think it was on the bottom, or it might, it might not be slate, but whatever, some kind of tile product. So, you know, a box of tiles, that was a probably 30 or $40 box of tiles. Again, I'm cheap because I buy everything on sale. So, um, and then Grayson was able to actually do the tile surround on this. Grayson and a friend did that. Um, that actually was a little bit of a difficult project because those come in sheets and so you have to cut the sheets and it's a lot easier if it's just like a backsplash or something like that. So he was a little frustrated with that project or me picking that particular tile. However, if I would have just picked the tile that's on the bottom and went all the way around, I think that would have had the same impact. Um, so, you know, materials wise, uh, we were probably in this, 150 bucks with everything. Um, and I thought that just had a huge impact. And then I repainted. Oh, big time. Yeah, big time. I think that, um, you know, and people don't have to choose a, a complicated tile either to make it look good. <laughs> yeah, hindsight, if I would have just done two boxes of tile of what we have on the bottom, that would have been a lot easier. Uh, we would have been in it probably a hundred bucks with caulking and, you know, uh, all that good grout and all that good stuff. And a lot of times people like people are intimidated to do projects like this. Um, tiles, not as hard as you would think. Uh, but again, there's a lot of people like Willie, we have people that are always willing to do side projects and, you know, do stuff under the table cash. And so um, we actually did pair a friend Colin a little bit to help us finish this one. So yeah, and I'm a big fan of hiring people too. Um, if it's not something that you think that you have the ability to do, go ahead and hire it out because it may not even that be that much to do, you know, to hire someone. And if it doesn't come out nice and you've got to fix a project, then I mean, you might as well just pay for someone to have it done, right? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I, I have I can't tell you how many houses we've gone in that you know, someone decided to lay their own flooring and did a terrible job doing it. I, we laid our own flooring. Can't say that we were perfect at it either. But, um, you know, when you start seeing like gaps and like, you know, laminate floors and stuff like that, that actually does have an impact on resale and people do notice it. And then again, everything costs a lot more in, in the buyer's brain than what it actually costs. Yeah. So, you know, when you bring up laminate, um, you know, it was kind of popular in the mid 2000s to do your own laminate. And I see so many bad laminate jobs where they didn't leave enough of a gap. And then, you know, the the joint ends start to bubble. Have you seen that where they come mm -hmm. together and they push up? 
Mm -hmm. And then you've got an uneven laminate floor. So I think definitely um, those kind of things look at hiring at least a friend, a Grayson type that knows what he's doing to kind of advise you and 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 see how it goes. But um, he did do the tile backsplash in our kitchen and it turned out really good. Um, he's done some projects, but yeah, he did this tile backsplash actually. That turned out good, but you know, it's a lot of work too. It took a lot of hours. So people who are more proficient at it and do it all the time can be a little bit faster. Um, this house, this was the first house that we bought when we moved to Portland. Um, uh, Andy, do you want to go to the before? I remember this house. Yeah. So this house was owned by an older couple. And for the most part, it was pretty well maintained, but just really dated. As you can see, there was that kind of I don't even know if that would be 70s or what kind of flooring that was, but vinyl. Um, the cabinets, they actually had professionally installed probably in the mid 2000s. Um, we ended up painting them. They were white. We ended up painting them gray and doing some trim around the top edge because I felt like there just needed to be some decorative element. Um, so if you scroll back to the other picture, Andy, um, you can see we did uh, a little bit of trim around the cabinets and we replaced all the um, knobs again, just cheap knobs that were silver. We actually kept the white appliances. If we would have stayed there a little bit longer, I probably would have switched out to stainless steel at some point, but those were all fairly new appliances and I didn't think it would have that much of an impact. Um, the countertops, we have a friend that does, that does countertops. Those are just for mica. So I think we paid our friend around $1,000 to do the Formica countertops. The paint, we ended up paying a painter to do those. That was around $1,000. Um, the backsplash Grayson did, I would say that was probably four or 500 in materials. And the tile floors, um, I've, I found those on closeout at Lowe's or Home Depot. I can't remember which one it was, but they were super inexpensive and they cover a lot of space because they're the larger subway tiles. So Grayson actually did those floors himself. So if you didn't do it yourself, my guess would be more like 7,000, something like that. But we were able to do a lot of this ourselves and just for a few thousand dollars had a huge impact. That house we sold in 2015, fall of 2015, and we ended up with 14 offers and that was before the market really got hot that was you know right at the beginning when things were like still kind of reasonable um i wish honestly i would have hung on to this house and and kept it because i just saw that one two doors down closed for three uh 50 and we we sold this one for i think 305 Wow. So, yeah, yeah, this house definitely was a good investment, but it was ugly before and it took somebody with some vision to kind of, you know, figure it out. Um, Andy, has I remember one. this house and it it did have some great things going for it. It had some nice hardwood floors um, and had some it was, you know, it wasn't your typical ranch. It was it was a cute house. I liked it. Yeah. See, like this is that same house. It had the built-ins, which were kind of cool. It had some of the old glass knobs. So I was able to find some glass knobs to match the ones that had been replaced over the years. Um, so every door I, I left, I liked the doors. They were a little bit beat up, but we painted them, but they still were kind of rustic. It had some rustic qualities. Um, we replaced the surround on the fireplace on this one. I actually... Um, the built-ins there, they I put wallpaper on those mm. on the bottom shelves. If you can see, I don't know if you can see yep. that far away, I, but yeah, that's wallpaper. It's a little harder to see, but it's I it is there. Yeah, and then um, I painted that brown accent wall. Speaking of you know things that probably aren't trendy anymore, but uh, I really liked that you know that room a lot. And that room we hardly ever used. It was kind of the formal living room. So I always had it kind of looking like this cute and staged. And, you know, I'd walk by and go, oh, that room's cute. And then go into the other rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we all do, though. We all have like a couple rooms in the house that are really, really cute. And then the rest of the family congregates in these other rooms that, you know, maybe you need a little bit more help, but it's like, there's no point. <laughs> yeah. 
So paint went a long way with this one. Again, the tile around the fireplace, super easy. Um, by the way, I love doing tile demo. So the last two fireplace pictures, I was the one that demoed the tile. Um, super gratifying. I don't know why. Because you have to get some aggression out sometimes. You do. And you have to take a hammer and you have to really like get into it. I don't know. I just think it's super fun. So um, Andy's got the before picture of what the living room kind of looked like. It's not the exact same angle, but. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I may not have given it to the before picture to him, but everything was super cluttered. Uh, um, everything was really not in style. And so when we found that house, it took a lot of vision for me to go, okay, what can I do with this? And I kind of had to live there for a few months and just look at some of the stuff they did and go, okay, this piece of furniture will fit there and make this space purposeful. Um, for example, in that house, they had this cutout for no explanation in the kitchen that was the shape of a closet. And I'm like, well, why don't we just put closet doors on there and make this a pantry? They did um, some funny things that just didn't make a lot of sense. They put tile in the entryway directly over the hardwood. Obviously that went up um, and we refinished the hardwood floors. It just, it, it took a little bit of imagination to go in there and go, okay, what can I do with this? And I think if you're willing to make those kinds of investments and they don't have to be like, right away. They can be over time. I mean, you see it all the time, right? You see mm -hmm. a house that needs a little bit of work versus the flipped house that gets 14 offers and goes way over asking price. Right. If, yeah. If you're willing to do some stuff yourself, you can take p potential equity, you know, sweat equity and take that potential and put it into your own pocket in the future. Um, I also, we did really well on that house too. I think we netted around, ah, there's the before picture. There it is. See, it's just like cluttery and it doesn't look good. So you can see right the hole in the kitchen there and and yeah, that ugly vinyl that went all the way throughout it. You know, you had to go in there and just go, OK, what, what can I do with this over time to make it look better? And we lived there for about two and a half years. Um, we probably put, I would say, all in all, once we were talking about this the other day, once we added everything up and what we did ourselves and what we hired out, about $15,000 over time of work um, in, into the house. And that was another one. Oh, there's the living room. Yep. I, I'm pretty sure I spent the night on that couch. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, we painted the walls. Uh, I did an accent wall gray. The walls were kind of more of a beigey color. We actually did paint the walls that little bit warmer beigey color. I, I liked it. Cream, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. um, but when we sold the house, just a little bit of staging went a really long way with that one, too. Yeah, that one was really cute. And you guys did a great job on that house, too. I mean, you, you do on all of your houses. I like that house because it did have some characteristics that were unique and the built-ins and those little decorative elements were great. And, you know, it was, you know, it was a good base to start with. Yeah, it was fun. That was kind of our um, first house that we'd ever really quote unquote flipped while we lived in it. And it, it ended up being a lot of work, but it was awesome when we were all said and done. Um, you know, we, spend a lot of nights and weekends. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, if you go into doing these kind of things and you're bound and determined to do them yourself, you are going to spend your weekends and your nights doing it. But um, I guess it was better than, you know, sitting around doing nothing. You know, at least we're putting, you know, our hard earned time into, into the house. And um, that's another one where I kind of wish that I would have kept that house because the yard was so amazing. Um, the lady that had lived there before was a master gardener. I had the biggest hydrangeas I've ever seen in my life. I had roses. We had all kinds of beautiful flowers. And I, I this is terrible, but I really want to drive by there and see if the people who bought the house kept the yard up. Oh, I do that too. That's Yeah, <laughs> I do that kind of thing all the time. And what's it, it is a little disappointing when you find out that they haven't kept it up, but... You know, what do you do? But, you know, I think you, you make a really good point in all these little projects. And and it doesn't have to be something you do overnight. You're, you're right about that. But I think the whole point is, as you're living in a house, it should be something that you're building up rather than, you know, tearing back down. And my grandma was in real estate for like 25 years. My Both my, my grandparents were. They were 
a husband and wife team. And my grandma would always say that there are builder uppers and there are terror downers. And it, it is true. There's certain kinds of people and they're either going to improve the house or they're not. And I love, I like to see the people that improve their houses. Yeah, I think at minimum, just, you know, keep keep up to date on your house and do the maintenance. Um, that's one thing I think that people don't really account for is the time and effort that it takes just to keep, even if you buy a brand new construction, you still have to clean your gutters, you still have to do certain things, you still have to winterize, you have to keep up on your yard and stuff. And, you know, it does take some time and effort. And I think at minimum, do those kind of things. And if you're too busy to do those kind of things, I totally get it. I understand. Um, you know, reach out to us for resources and ask us for people to do those kind of things. Because when it comes down to it, you're going to be happy that you did. Because if you neglect your house, it's just going to cost you money in the long run when you go to sell it. Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, I think that's all we have time for today. Um, so again, if you are needing the visuals on this, go to realoregonlifestyle.com. Uh, we'll be posting those there or, or catch us on Facebook or YouTube. Um, and you can also find us on Instagram. So thank you all for joining us and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.